just check my app. Do I, do Watch I? me dab. Yeah. Bomb in traffic, I don't do the cash. I do the dash. Stay, Stay left shorty stinking in the alley. Bow. That shit was sad. It's your phone now, let's not the wallet. Niggas talking like they off of Molly. Free BMO, he just called a body. On his B-Day, they buried his body. Fuck both of the Hajis. No, I can't wait to see Poppy. Bullets get hot like a Taki. Take a nigga pole like Tavi. D Nice, Deontay Hubbard, who was on the drill scene in Minneapolis died at an early age of 32. D-Nice was featured on season one of Doc UF 22 of Final Hours. Final Hours is a docudrama series that captures surreal events in a person's final hour, so viewers may have a reality check before it's too late. Green Light is a docudrama series that shares a more in-depth look into a person's life to show others the outliers of the causes and effects. Deontay Hubbard's decisions caused his demise, but through someone else's faults lies correction and change. In D. Nice's final hours, you've seen his mother move from Chirac to Murder App to save her son from gang members on the west side of Chicago. In her attempt to save her son, Deontay took this opportunity to continue his life of crime and gang shootings for personal gains. From the rat to the app, D-Nice wanted his gains. I wish the price to get it didn't matter. His mother uprooted and left everything to save him. Okay. So I'm finna take y'all down the block to 69th and 85th in BC and BP and Dowling to Glenwood on the north side. Here is the story of D Nice. D Nice was a hardcore street dude. He was born and raised on the west side of Chicago. As he grew, he adopted a street status that put fear in the hearts of many. Even his mother hated his actions. Many compare growing up on the west side of Chicago equivalent to living in Iraq with the incline in gang shootings and murder. But to many residents, the west side is where the heart is and leaving it is not an answer. Deontay, living amongst the GDs, became involved with the gangster disciples on the west side of his neighborhood. This led to him ganging with the GDs before his relocation to Minneapolis. D-Nice had got caught in a mix of gang activities and his mother realized her son needed to get out of Chicago. She needs to relocate and get out of Chirac. As Deontay's mother looks into his eyes, she cringes and rebukes the spirit that lives within him. She sees a dazzle of what is to become. It is inevitable. We need to go. It is time. Her mind is shattered. She can't think straight, yet she is humble. The loving mother with a gentle heart to the harsh reality of a son's lamented Demise.
in 2001, Deontay Hubbard and two younger brothers moved to Booker Center, Minnesota. They moved in the project apartment buildings in Summer Chase. After relocating to the projects, Deontay started to walk around the territory of the Black Peace Stones. Amongst the Black Peace Stones were CVLs and UVLs. They all hung in one group and wreaked terror amongst the residents. Deontay had stumbled amongst a group of Peace Stones and Vice Lords, and after a short interaction, Deontay had been wanting to flip to a Vice Lord for some time. So we saw his opportunity to flip. And he did. Mo was the leader of the Black Peace Stone, but Eddie ran the Vice Lords. And since Mo was the Peace Stone, he allowed Eddie and his crew to flip Deontay. Eddie was from the North Lawndale neighborhood on the west side of Chicago. After they flipped Deontay, he told Deontay, Look, you are now a CVL, and CVLs are conservative vice lords and serve as the foundation for the entire nation. You are in good hands with us. The following week, Eddie and CJ taught Deontay the meaning of all is well, the five-pointed star, the pyramid with the top hat, dice song, seven or eleven, dollar sign, and the rest of his lick for CVL. You see where this is going, and since you listeners are vice lords, he was teaching D-Nice how to represent for the CVL. Alongside the P-Stones and vice lords, D-Nice started to bang with the GDs. The projects were big, but they held two sides of the land. One side held the GDs and BDs, and the other side held members under the five. In one instance, D-Nice and CJ caught a GD walking through the park and got on that. I was chilling with a chick when my phone took off. I let it fade off like seven times in each rip. I let it ring through, not realizing one of the guys got into it with some of the other guys in the project apartment. So I immediately left Shorty on foot and fell through for D-Nice as he was blowing me up and I didn't know why. I finally got him on the phone and he like, Wheezy, where the hell you been? I've been calling you. They slide down on me. I met up with Deontay and he like, bro, club on my ass. I was chilling with CJ and we was walking through the land when we spotted folks ass after I told him if I caught him again, I was going to crease him. And he tried to sneak through and I caught his ass. So I folded him up in front of like 10 people. beat him so badly like some dude ran up with a bat but I could see in his eyes he was scared so CJ rushed him and grabbed the bat from him and beat him with it I think he broke something but I took off on two other dudes next thing you know we banging with dudes we didn't know I'm like where's the guys when you need them on CVL me and CJ was cleaning house a Weezy remember dude I did the robbery with when I snatched his weed, I'm like, yeah, see no, he like, cool, where he at? I'm like, I don't know, well, when I see him, I'ma crease him. I'm like, why? Cause he left me and CJ on foot last week. I'ma tell you later, but when I see him, I'ma beat him on CVL. But while CJ was beating dude with a bat, I was still folding folks ass up. I tried to get him to come to the laundry room, but he was scared, so I creased him in front of everybody. I heard 12, so I grabbed CJ and we footed to CJ crib. I tried to hit the pad, but 12 was at my crib. On CVL, he snitched me out. After CJ and D-Nice flooded folks now, they shook it and laid low from the block for a few days. 
days later, Eddie and D-Nice spoke about the situation between D-Nice and Sino. Since both were CVLs, Eddie got on Sino for leaving D-Nice and CJ on foot about a situation on the block. During council meeting, Eddie advised Sino he had broke his oath as a CVL. Then Eddie asked Sino, what is his oath? And Sino looked confused. Then Eddie stated, what is your oath? And Sino replied, I Lord Sino, in the name of Almighty, CVL would not dishonor my most sacred weapon, meaning Vice Lord, love and unity. Nor under the threat of death will I deny those who stand beside me. By birth, spirit, and through the heart's core, I come as I am, a Vice Lord. And Eddie responded, Do you also know the statement of love? And Sino stated, Yes, I do. So why did you leave your lords as you stood beside them? And Sino stated he didn't want to violate his release from prison as he was on parole for a botched robbery in 1998. Stop with the excuses. You left the guys. Since you fled on D-Nice, you and him go get down in the laundry room. Let's go. Sino was scared to fight Deontay, but Eddie knew it. He was afraid of Deontay and in actuality, this was a plot to break his fear and Deontay was loving it. Before Deontay and Sino could make it to the laundry room, Deontay's mother ran up on Deontay in essence of him being disrespectful after she told him to stand down and come home. Deontay then called and stated, Hey Weezy, my mother tripping. If I can sneak back out, I'll be back. If not, tell the guys I'll be back out tomorrow and tell Sino this will get handled a later day. He still have a violation coming on CBL. What's up? What you want, Chuck? Shit bout to push this weight. I got about half a pound. I'm trying to blow. Deontay stated, Well, I'll buy a QP right now. A word? Yeah. Well, shit. I'm on my way. I bet. Hello? What up? Shit. Hey, my man's on his way to sell me a QP. I'm finna shoot this dude. Word? Hell yeah. Soon as he pull up, I'm gonna tell him to come in the hallway. And as soon as he do, I'm gonna blitz shorty down. I just got me a 40 caliper Glock. So he gonna give it up or get shot. Watch how I do this. Dude gonna respect my name on CBL. Hey, just at my side and answer when I call you. I may need you. What up, Chuck? You got that? Yeah, my bag. All right, Lord, follow me. It's too many people outside. Hey, yo, who that behind the door? I ain't no fool. Bro, I'm good. I ain't getting out the car. I'm straight on you. As Chuck realizes some strange movement behind the door in the apartment complex, he decides to fall back. And then Deontay pulls out a Glock 40 and fires nine shots through the driver door, striking Chuck five times. Deontay and his brother DeAndre is later booked on armed robbery, assault with a deadly weapon, and Deontay is booked on felon in possession of a firearm. On another instance, one of the UVLs was selling his vehicle and D-Nice wanted to buy it. He took a test drive and told the owner to run into the gas station and grab a black. While inside, Deontay 
took off in his vehicle. After he took off, 12 later recovered the vehicle and had been stripped of his kicker sound system, CDs, DVDs, and other valuables belonging to one of the members of the UVLs. He then reached out to Mo, who was a high rank amongst the Blackstones and informed him that Deontay had broken his oath and Mo replied that he needs to call Eddie. Eddie asked the member how has D-Nice broken his oath. He replied, by the birth, spirit, and through the heart's core, I come as I am, a vice lord, I come in love and unity, and Deontay broke all of the above, and if you a vice lord, you know exactly what I'm saying. I would not speak on the further details of the conversation, it is what it is. There are boundaries that even the hardest gangster must live by. That's no switching. Do not cross that line. On phone. That switch tag shit can destroy a person's image, you feel me? And Deontay didn't think twice about being labeled a flip on CBL. And Deontay stated, look, I'm a real CBL. I fear no man. I ain't worried about no dude. If you're thinking, then try me. And Deontay also stated, give me your chain. Give me your watch. I don't pay for nothing. That's your job. I'ma just take it. Excuse me, pardon my French, but give me that. That's my chain. Those my shoes. I just took your shit. Now get the fuck on. On CBL. And Deontay also stated, you can throw me to the wolves and I'll return leading the pack. Now go run tell that. Ain't nobody gon' touch me on Vice Lord. Just my name alone drops the hearts of the lions. Cause they ass no. Lord ass would nail something. had expressed his life as a CVL was where his heart was, which is why he flipped from a GD to a conservative vice lord. Deontay stated, he is not going to be a prisoner of fear. He'd rather be feared than loved, as love would get you killed and fear would get you respect. Deontay stated, Getting what you want is not nearly as giving what you have. I have a lot of heart, and any dude who would respect that, whether you love me or hate me. Hey, Almighty, I'ma get with you, bro. In a couple days, my shorty them gone. Deontay took on a lot of challenges by himself. He had very few friends, as most his friends he either shot or robbed. Deontay wasn't afraid to accept his fate. He knew eventually all his betrayals and life of crime will eventually catch up to him. Fear is a gratitude that certain people take on as an intro to their lifestyle. And Deontay believed his outcome was his income, and he vowed 
to take it by any means necessary. In our culture norm, if someone fears you, that is a recipe for death. People will not live unease, nor will they ever live in distress. Deontay's life of terrorism and destruction and the fear he brought amongst others will come to an end on the evening of November 12th of 2019. Deontay just lost his younger brother. He didn't get to spend much time with them, but now he rests with his brother in peace and spirit. say why do you continue to live in North Minneapolis and I say because this is the world we live in and as soon as you divorce yourself of that it's like you don't see it anymore it doesn't matter to you and while I'm here you know there are little kids that I want to affect and I want to be I want to be an element of peace in this world and so I walk around with my dogs and I am peace walking through and hoping to spread that to other people because a lot of them don't see that. If you're going to be scared, then you know, you're going to find something to scare you. You find what you're looking for, and if you're looking for trouble, you probably will find it. But if you're trying to look for goodness and, you know, your mind is open to that, you're going to find that. In reality, it is not as bad as people think it is. I think we get a lot of bad press. I've been on the North South like 35 years, man. They said it was bad back then, but that one's so true. They said, they say it's, it's bad now, and guess what? That ain't so true. There ain't no hood. I mean that. No hood. We live in a neighborhood. That stereotype is messing with communities up. You hear a lot of negative things about what goes on in this area, but there's a lot, there's a ton of positive things that's come out of this area. On one block alone, you can see so many different cultures, and it's not just one, you know, and each block is actually different from, from the other. When I